Good morning, folks. We've got an extended look at increasing solar activity. We've got solar forcing as usual on Sundays, plus some extra gems embedded into that larger topic as well. We'll begin at spaceweathernews.com and we find the last 24 hours on our star were without eruptive activity, but it's hard to really say everything is calm. Plasma filaments abound, new active areas popping up as we'll see a few times here at the end of the sequence, increased motion and brightness and occurring right as a plasma filament was destabilizing on the southeastern limb. It is actually still destabilizing this morning. Shifted, lifted, but will it eject or collapse? We'll see. Solar wind has a bit of a story as well. KP index still in the green but on the rise as solar wind from a corona hole stream has arrived at Earth. That's top row here, bottom two panels which are plasma speed and temperature, a moderate intensity stream only so far. Let's go to an interesting correlation between Earth tilt and space weather effect. Using GPS scintillations during enhanced solar activity, they noticed how winter time and the two equinox periods seemed to favor localized disruptions, with virtually none in summertime. This matches the patches and particle precipitation patterns with the seasons, enhanced at the polar regions which see the largest relative change in light each year. If it's a super flare, none of this is going to matter, but all of those smaller ones will track for smaller disruptions until that day are expected to be enhanced in the spring and fall, and during the solstice periods, it's the winter hemisphere more under geomagnetic duress from inclement space weather. Up next, we're looking at river flooding and solar activity. Here they are noticing both short and longer cycles matching solar forcing periodicity and cycle activity, including a long wax and wane over 2300 years, which is basically a house stat solar cycle. We come next to a similar story in California, talking precipitation in wintertime, with solar forcing being identified as a significant contributor. But the most important part of this paper was the fact that aerosol sensitivity within the clouds was more dominant than greenhouse gases, even comparing European or Asian aerosol emissions to smog from their very own local streets. This is because the clouds are what's important. They are misunderstood and those uncertainties create CO2 bias and propagate errors throughout the climate models. This was the purpose of our open letter to the president of the AGU, which is linked right below this video in today's list if you haven't seen it. It's about as clear cut as you get, and I've actually had no pushback from any of the usual trolls or even the usual professor dissidents we get around here. And yes, that paper about California is also from the AGU, JGR Atmospheres. Coming down the stretch, we've got a look at the 1903 solar storm, and it appears this one qualifies as another of those nearly superstorm level events, but not quite like the Carrington event. With the continued identification of these solar storm events in the past, we can now see that their occurrences are more surprising than we imagined. Whether it's from a quiet sun, strong sun, weak cycle, strong cycle, never count this one out. But more importantly these days, this is because with Earth's magnetic field fading we are becoming increasingly vulnerable. A quick nod here to a new book authored by someone I cite in my textbook quite a bit. Like the other dedicated topic textbooks, it is a bit more complex and it is a bit more expensive. But if you want to go beyond my beginner's textbook on space weather, the magnetic reversal and pole shift ongoing, solar control of the weather, earthquakes, human health and technology, those more dedicated and yes, expensive textbooks are pretty much the only way. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. Website members at suspiciousobservers.org, we had a fun podcast yesterday where we hit the science, the usual out there discussion, and also looked inward from both a metaphorical and behind the scenes perspective. Website memberships are why this morning show comes out for free 365 days a year. We've got your wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.